Uh, shouting. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I want to invite you to uh, my talk, Make It Move. I was struggling kind of bit with the um, thing I want to say at first because I knew there was something that I want to tell here and I couldn't point the finger on it. Uh, and then it was a bit like, um, it's probably the thing I do with Blender and I just enjoy hearing what other people do with Blender and I want to share possibilities and I want to share tiny tricks and things that I do. Um, so, hello, I'm Alexander Mitzkus. Um, I'm from Cologne, Germany and work as a motion designer, but more onto this later. You will find me online uh, as Zuga Master. It's uh, my stupid nickname that I will keep for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> for um, more depth info on what we're talking about today. It's um, every day, some case studies that I brought with me from those, plus um, characters which result from those every days and result from those um, case studies. First things first, I'm not an animator. When I talk about animation, uh, it's not character animation, it's nothing you would see in an open movie, but it's um, still conveying uh, motion and it's conveying a story, but not in a way where there's a, a full rig character, but it's more uh, cartoonish or uh, simulation. I'm also not an illustrator. I work as a motion designer, as I said before, uh, but I still am, uh, I'm still going to talk about illustration uh, and how to illustrate with Blender. But most importantly, I'm a motion designer and I'm currently teaching illustration, so it's not too, it's too far off what I do. Um, every day, uh, who of you knows um, Mike Winkelmann? Who of you knows Beeple? Uh, not enough. I'll put a link in the last slide. Uh, Mike Winkelmann is doing every days, which is basically a way for him uh, to do an artwork or uh, illustration a day, and he does this now for 10 years. You can imagine if you look back, because there's the internet and this person shares everything he does, there's a big archive of his work, his workflow improvements, and um, yeah, lots of this is often also shared as open knowledge. Um, those dailies didn't only help uh, Mike Winkelmann, but all, also me in uh, pursuing my career. Um, in 2013, 160 of those dailies, so not a full year, but uh, half a year, um, helped me to build up a portfolio in a quite short amount of time from nothing. And um, please remember this date when you see the upcoming reel without sound. Um, I would love to play the music, but YouTube will not like the music. Um, this was also back when Andrew Price first um, uh, shared a video or file of mine and this is uh, the video you saw before with the blue and green ball things is the video that was clicked the most on my YouTube channel just because Andrew shared the link so thanks for that mm, and it already shows um, exactly what I want to talk about it's um, all illustrations so all modeling shading text texturing uh, is uh, done by myself um, and to bring it to life I had to animate parts of this um, this reel has um, brought me to where I am now and surprised me um, over the years because then I also found parts in a Blender SIGGRAPH reel, uh, so this baseball also went to SIGGRAPH. Um, yeah. This also opened the doors to the conference for me, so um, due to this I got my job and I got my ticket to the conference. Um, what happened later is 60 days of type, 36 days of type. It's an online event design um, challenge where uh, people meet together as a 36 day celebration of type and creativity. How the, um, yeah, ah, the officials call it. Um, it's way easier to um, work 36 days in a row than 160 days. And this is nothing I would um, recommend somebody with family and kids. Um, but I re recommend it uh, to myself in 2016, um, and I did. And I thought this would be fun, it's like just a small amount of time uh, and I will do something. And so when I say 36 days of type, is you create an illustration of a letter, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, each day. Some designers just uh, do like actual font, so there's like one letter in a distinct um, style and you just propagate it through the whole alphabet. Uh, and then there's me doing this uh, for some letters, switching styles for some letters, 
switching styles for some letters, which is kind of fun now, but was super stressful in the beginning, because uh, you can also tell I'm not showing you um, the letters A to G, because I'm not really proud of those. But um, just after those G, 10 uh, or so letters, I started to get a workflow and get uh, stuff done in a um, small amount of time that was handleable with real life and uh, working. So um, it's also not a way just to um, improve what I could do, but it also taught me things I couldn't do because before 2016, I was not really happy with how I texture things and how to UV map. And even if those are simple objects, uh, it really helped me to um, bring um, textures onto my modeling and illustration. So why this is called make it move? Because I made it move. Um, after the full alphabet, there's a small series of numbers that you still have to figure out. And I was running out of time and out of nerves. So I had to find a way to make a series that was uh, um, still good enough for me. So I had like really high standards by the end of the series. Um, and it was also uh, fun to look at. And these were the ones that went more or less um, through the roof. And people liked them and asked for more. Um, and it's also the first time where I tried more of those character things again. Even though I would not recommend to call everything that has eyes uh, a character, it's still a way to there. Um, it got more complicated with each character, so uh, as soon as I have the basic texturing, shading, and simulation um, done, I can build a top. So this is um, also an interesting way. It's just moving along a spline, and the whole nice random mo motion is just the hair dynamics. Um, and now I'm at the very, very end of the series. So what I've been trying with the static illustrations was like always telling a bit of a story. So if I have the letter U, I show an underground. If I have a V, I show voltage, whatever. Um, I didn't have the ability with the letters and dynamics until the very last one where I was finally able to tell a story. But please don't tell me which story, story I told. Uh, I, was just, I was just happy uh, to be actually uh, so confident in my technique with the hair fluff that I could actually work uh, on it. Um, yeah, the next thing that comes after the year 2017 is the year 2016 uh, is the year 2017. And I thought, I really want to improve now. And it was not easy but I hope I was able to improve. Um, I'm just going to keep this here for a while so you can gaze upon it and check out what I tried out. Because I think uh, even just with a quick glance over it, you can see there's many techniques, uh, some of those which I've never touched before and some of those uh, I will, uh, uh, later, um, will later have presented in 2017, which are the uh, C and the M, the meta balls, which was my last year's talk. Uh, and of course, the list goes on and on. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody is familiar with the series. I have seen it somewhere on the web. But um, there's also um, some moving parts in here, which I will uh, dissect later. So coming to the next year, 2018, my reaction to the 36 days of type prompt was, <laughs> how was I able to do this? Um, and I just show you the result, and then I'm going to want to have um, one answer from you. Just shout it. How did I do this? Metabots, Meta really. Uh, exactly, it's Metabots, and I um, built this thing uh, during um, or after my presentation on Metabots. And I also did it after my discussions with Jack Luke um, here at the Banner Conference 2017, because this is set up with animation nodes. All the things you saw before, every letter was done by hand. But uh, thanks to Jack's work, I just built my procedure generator. And uh, this is um, um, a previous version where I was thinking if I could actually do just one long video on um, with each uh, character uh, morphing into existence. But then I found out that um, rendering that many frames was not so fun. So. Um, I built the setup, and it's a bit tiny because the resolution is not the greatest, but I hope it will play back, yeah. Um, so this is um, a look into my network, and what you can see here, I'm not sure if I 
should point um, is the node tree do um, downstairs underneath and just a matcap renderer and something which I'm really proud of with one frame delay. Um, so I'm generating these letters and I had to found, find a way to not touch the file anymore because um, I want it to be as quick as possible. And if you have these different letters um, and generate random objects around them, um, they probably go out of frame. And um, if you look closely, you can see that every time for one frame, it's out of frame and then the camera syncs with the bounding box of the newly generated objects and you will have always a perfect center um, graphic. And this is really something uh, that's super simple but um, hard to master. Yeah, so Andrew Price, you're still not here. Uh, procedure modeling will take over uh, the future. Um, on to some case studies. The case studies I now want to show you are from the year 2017 because uh, the animation node setup from 2018 is uh, pretty fun and nice to look at, but I'm not sure how animation nodes and everything nodes will uh, work in the future. So uh, let's take a look um, at hot air. Uh, one of the um, uh, graphics I illustrated in 2017 was this um, fan eye and um, I first thought I could maybe do something like those um, car selling things you sometimes see in American movies, which I have never seen in real life, only in American movies. Um, and I want to show you how these things come into existence. And it just starts with uh, lots of scribbling and sketches. And I need to be honest here, I cleaned up my sketchbook. This never looked like this. Um, it's just um, the sketches I did uh, repositioned. And the sketch for um, this lovely letter I looked something like this. And um, it's just something that's really uh, important for me because I think um, there are lots of great young uh, artists in the Blender community that often get stuck uh, in the beginning of their idea and try to figure out what they do. As soon as you put down a small sketch, you uh, exactly know what you want to do and you keep track better. Another thing that helps me a lot when uh, working so quickly on these um, everyday letters is to first build a um, simple set of, of the technique and illustration style I want to use. Uh, in this case, um, I don't build the round uh, object first. I just build a flag and a cloth simulation and check if it works. And uh, as Blender is really nice in um, just uh, copying over uh, modifiers and settings, um, I can first tweak this. Uh, and then make sure that the whole illustration uh, works in the form and arrangement as I want. Mm, another thing is that I can also, um, when I have one, um, one iteration of this, I can quickly test materials uh, on the simple surface uh, and quickly onto the shader, which is also quite fun. I don't know if anybody knows um, how to do a, a radiance shader in uh, cycles. It's quite simple. Um, I rebuilt this with the principal shader uh, for the stock. So you just get a um, metallic uh, shader, then you get a color ramp and you can set up uh, the um, color ramp to be not RGB but HSL and use the far side of the clock. And for the um, angle input you just, or the factor input, you take an angle and uh, Fresnel and uh, facing just gives you a black and white value that you can then map and um, color in with the use saturation value. So just take a quick screenshot of this with your mind and the next time you want to uh, make a reticent or hot metals, uh, just copy over this tiny node tree. Uh, yeah, here I uh, tweaked it a bit more and add uh, some normal maps, but it's just uh, really simple techniques uh, stacked on top. Uh, simple techniques are also the rubber bands I used for the letter E. Um, I'm quite happy how this thing turned out and I wanted to do more of these, but um, they're still quite time consuming to create and a bit buggy in the end. But um, this started uh, more or less the same way and I was uh, able to put this out in uh, I think three to four hours of work with sketching, rendering and all. So first I did a sketch uh, with like, some kind of engine theme because I always try to match the first letter with some uh, theme. Um, but it turned out that this thing somehow was fun, like working with circles and bands. And this is not uh, drawn after the illustration, it's really a sketch I did before. And um, this is just one of the tests where I tried to figure out if I can even use cloth simulation to uh, do such a thing in Blender, because um, 
the new uh, 2.8 clock simulation is amazing, but the old 2.79 one had some struggles. Um, so again, I do the sketch, I do a small proof of concept, and the next thing um, I am able to do is uh, to um, then fix out my materials and my uh, thickness of the bands. Uh, and here's the, the next biggest trick. Don't simulate um, double-sided bands. You can just simulate a flat strip of faces and then extrude them via the um, solidify modifier. Thank you, Lino. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you just put everything into an arrangement and um, there's not much to do but um, find one start setup where you can uh, put the bands into idle mode and then you just uh, move together your uh, graphic. And I actually first didn't want to render the graphic because I found it quite um, strange. And then I just added the ground plane so that the bands would actually bump onto the ground plane and everything uh, worked as expected for me. Um, so if you've been sitting here in the rounds and trying to stalk my uh, Twitter handle, you've probably seen my rubber ducky. Um, this is this uh, pretty thing. Uh, the letter Q was uh, some kind of a challenge for me. I was scribbling around and I had this idea with a pool and then I needed um, a pool board and some perspective in my graphics. And you see that these uh, graphics are all just on an um, infinite background. So there was no way to, to put this perspective thing with a pool. Um, so I had this small sketch of a rubber duck. And if you turn it, you get this Q. Um, how did I model it? I modeled it somehow. I'm not sure what I did. Um, I think it's just um, a torus and a bridge um, to the head and um, all pieces are disconnected. And I was really unhappy with this um, graphic because it looked extremely boring. Um, you could tell when it's not moving that it's uh, poorly modeled. So I had to figure something out. And uh, it's the first time in years I used the wave modifier again, and I think it's still applicable. It's a fun tool, and please don't remove it in any case. Um, um, the nice thing is um, if you select the uh, normals, you can make sure that your mesh not waves uh, into a X, Y, or a Z direction, but along its normal, so you get like this thickness wobbling. and. Um, then you just drop it into a, a, a nice uh, reflecting background and uh, you have everything you need. Uh, also, the series was not rendered with a Filmic Blender, even though it uh, already were some builds around. And um, uh, our lovely friend Troy um, had really huge issues with the blown out highlights uh, on this uh, character. So speaking about lights, um, if I got asked about from some people on the conference, how do I light or how do I do my um, shaders? I basically just take the saturation value, I put it to one and have it always fixed at the highest value. And then I just use uh, some, some HDRI of a warehouse, uh, which is not too important, it's just for ambient light, plus uh, area light as key and the area light as uh, rim light, just similar to here. Um, these area lights are just um, as bright as I want them to be. It's changing all the time. And the size of the area lights is approximately half uh, of the object itself, just as a quick note. And then you get this fun thing, which brings me to my next point is um, um, I started to build these kinds of things and I always wanted to do characters. So I thought, okay, when I want to build characters, I don't have the time to build complex rigs. I'm not a rigger, I'm not an animator. So first, what do I want from a character? I want uh, smooth mesh deformations. I want uh, animation that has as much appeal as I can create. So it should look nice, even though I'm not able to create um, nice animations. Um, broken down, this just means I, I don't want a low poly look. That's the thing I'm not doing in any of my graphics. So there's no like triangular shapes. There's no extremely hard um, edges. So if there's edges, they should be beveled. Um, the animation should just be fun. It's like the rubber duck. I don't care if it's uh, physically possible or makes sense. It should just be fun. And the rig should also just be fun. Uh, one small point I had to add into this uh, presentation. If you've been to Yalti's talk about animation before um, and you've read uh, Scott McCloud's um, Understanding Comics, uh, my characters will be on the picture plane at this position. Somewhat abstract and um, reduced to the meaning. Um, so how can we build a character with animation and illustration? Uh, we first model a stick. 
but often the stick is stiff and dead, and that's not a character. <laughs> um, but there's an uh, amazing uh, part in Blender which you can use, and this is uh, armature. And you can just add one bone, and you get a character. Um, animation um, and movement can convey so much information on the, to an object that was moving before. Like this is, uh, technically it's animation, it's frames after one another, but uh, it's not really a character. The motion gives the stick character, and uh, it's even not that complicated to build. Um, because I'm not so confident in building rigs, I'm just trying things out. I'm going to show you some of my um, ideas. So, what? Next slide. Ah, yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, so, this is one approximation to bring character or to bring life to an illustration. Um, but we can also use the symbols that uh, Yalti was talking about. So if he draws a face, he just draws two dots and a line and get a face. Um, I actually wanted to do the same thing with my characters, but then I thought, like, no, it's maybe too simple and maybe too clear. I want it to be really complicated, so um, I just added arms. And um, as soon as you add arms um, or feet, you're able to um, add a more cartoony character and also, again, uh, convey information. Um, and as I wanted to share something with this talk and not just stand here and talk about my work, um, I want to tell you something um, or about something that I found out. It's bendy bones, it's amazing. So if you're not a rigger and you want to have uh, nice and fun deformations, you should check out bendy bones. Um, there's lots of documentation about this, there are video tutorials, but um, just the thing that's fun, you have three bones, the one bendy bone and the head and the tail control bone. You assign the complete mesh, that this is my weight painting, everything red. You assign the complete mesh to an arm, limb, uh, eyebrow, and you get um, extreme fine controls about the curve and the form. And I think this is not how bendy bones is intended to use, but it's how I use it, and it's um, really uh, has really helped me to get more deformation and more clean um, flow lines into my uh, characters. Um, the other thing is you can just deactivate the bendy bone and play around with it. There's also um, more to the bendy bone than what you can see right now. So you can also uh, change the in and out point of the curve, in and out point of the curvature. Um, uh, which I will do just in a second. Um, so you can have uh, even more complex deformations and curvatures without having uh, any huge problems. Um, why do I show you this? Um, the beginning I said like every days are cool, fun and a good way to learn, but you don't have much time every day left after work, eating, sleeping. Um, so what if I want to do a second character, not a stick with arms, but a um, light bulb with arms? I can just uh, take the same rig I have before, do my 100% uh, uh, weight paint to the whole arm rig um, with another arm mesh, and I'm um, instantly set up. Uh, there's um, automatic weights don't work in this case, because neither my mesh nor my rig is sufficient. Um, but uh, just assign the whole limb to uh, one bone is really effective. Um, as soon as, uh, as uh, you start uh, animating a stick, you uh, also want to animate a, a real animal. And I like jiggly animals, which don't use bendy bones, um, because I didn't understand them fully there. Um, but what uh, do I mean when I talk about jiggly animals? Um, I talk about this little fellow. And there's uh, multiple parts to this um, thing, and I want to just uh, give you again a small roundup so you can maybe reuse techniques that I used to build this model. Again, please sketch, please try out ideas, and uh, copy Steel Like an Artist. Um, I need to give credit to uh, Guil Rachel, um, because this is from a really nice book, the character design quarterly uh, in its fourth edition. And this is a secondary, or an um, a remake or a different version of a, a character which is shown in that book, um, put into 3D. And last year I showed you that you can use um, Metaballs to do this thing, and lots of people came to me and didn't like Metaballs. The other half did like Metaballs, but um, so I uh, just thought I'd bring you a version uh, where you don't need Metaballs to uh, build a character like this. Um, and what I did is just block out the character as far as I could to get the volumes right. Um, 
because I knew I will need a good flow. And as soon as I uh, had this good flow, I retopologized uh, this thing as good as I could. I didn't use any tools. You just um, click down in the window on snap to face and build your topology around the base mesh. Um, when you're done with the base mesh, uh, you can uh, rig the thing, which is basically uh, this time just automatic weights. Um, and then you can add the um, soft body simulation. And um, I don't want to show you the full values and settings that I used because it's um, so straightforward that um, you should just try it out. Because uh, the next thing you need to do uh, after you modeled and uh, basic, basic rigged your character is uh, define a heat map where your character is stiff and where your character is jiggly. In this case, the or is uh, deformed by soft bodies. In this case, um, you define the stiffness values, so the head stays still. You add um, weight to it, and it gets uh, displayed in red. The um, blue parts are the parts that will be transformed by the uh, soft body deformation. And then you just um, name your vertex group, and you name your bones, not like me. Um, and then you can define uh, the soft body goal. The soft body goal is basically the thing that stays stiff and uh, the rest is the part that moves. Important, the minimum is set not to um, zero, but to 0.95%. Uh, uh, um, so you still get some um, um, snap back to the original uh, surface. Yeah. Then. Uh, What's interesting to me, on top of the whole thing, you can still um, add shape keys. This is how I added the blinking. I was not um, sure how to do it with bones quickly, so I just add a shape key with closed eyes and open eyes, which I can switch on and off during the animation. Um, but this is not really the, the fun part of the whole thing. The most fun part is the neck. I was really happy um, to see that not only the um, after motion work, but also the um, squash um, gets um, also calculated into the whole thing. And the second best part, the thing is interactive. Um, so as soon as you build the setup and you hit the uh, play button, your whole thing uh, can run uh, on a MacBook Pro uh, in uh, 25 FPS. You can uh, use this to have a small uh, puppet and um, synchronize it with uh, rap music, um, <laughs> which, which is what I'm going to plan with this character. Uh, and you can also um, see that it's still, pos uh, still possible to um, transform the parts that are um, uh, moved by soft bodies. Um, so if you're here at the conference, um, feel free to come by and get the file from me of the chicken. I'm not going to upload it because I want to do more with it, but um, if you like, come by and check it out. Uh, one thing for the rendering, the colors are done by vertex colors and the lighting are an HDRI and two area lights. Further reading, please check out Beeple and all the stuff that's on this uh, slide. I will keep this open for some seconds so that the stream can see this. Uh, I also um, put in the talks I referenced, uh, referenced from this year's Blender conference. Um, and uh, yeah, have a good conference and thank you very much for listening.